Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're on week three of uh, our project uh, for the oven. You know, we're working on right now. We're working on the cure oven. I'm going to take you around and show you some of the uh, some of the cure oven stuff and some developments that happened on late Saturday last week. Uh, today is Monday, but uh, as you can see behind me, those structures up there. See what's on the other side of it. My oven needs to keep going, and that's not good. So I got a fire break over there. It turned out to be in the way. Uh, well, I'll spin you 180 degrees. My oven keeps going that way behind me. But we'll spin you around and show you our progress on uh, the curing oven, and uh, the, we'll show, the, show you the conveyor guy's progress on the dry off oven or the dehydration oven. All right, uh, enjoy. Well, first of all, as you can see here, we've, uh, we're doing our floor channels just like we did on the other one. We weld the floor channels in, tack them into the base plates, everything's squared to our center line, and our center line just keeps on trucking. This is our last set of structures. But if we look up, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, so uh, at, we already told the building guy and the general and stuff that that fire break uh, is in the way, so they're gonna, Take out a substantial portion of that, let us finish building our oven, and uh, then build it back in, probably tight, you know, just fasten it right to the oven. But our oven comes clear out to where that green line ends right there. So we come clear out to that black line, that little black Sharpie mark right there. So that's what we're looking at there. Uh, whoops <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't clear the conveyor either so over on this side over here The conveyor is gonna hit that wall too over in this area here So the conveyor pokes out of here in two places because it's going down in this room and hooking a big u-turn All right But that was our developments. Hey, eh, but it's typical, you know, it's pretty much more of the same uh, Right now we're uh, putting in the top angle before we can hang wall panels uh, there's a little two by two uh, top angle that goes in there. You can see down there, they're up there tack welding that in. And this is the time that they square all the columns up on the top. That's why you see those ratchet tie downs over here and over here running diagonally just to rack the whole assembly and get it, uh, get the whole oven square. Otherwise our roof panels don't fit right. So you're just building a giant box is all you're doing. All right, but they're up there doing their thing. And we'll, we're gonna shoot some more developments as the week progresses, it's only Monday. There's more action and adventure to come. They're working on I-beams over here. We've got secondary structure here. Uh, the tan iron is uh, conveyor guys. We've got conveyor line running through our dehydrant oven right now and they're out to there so that's good so now I can get back after they're after they're done with that I can get back in there and do some more work uh, I got some more high reach work to do in there I've got a uh, re uh, return duct and uh, some block offs and only then can we put a floor in it there was a comment on the channel about the floor how do we protect it well we insulate it two inches and put a B deck a corrugated B deck down on the floor and I'll sh when we're doing that I'll show you what that's all about Okay, so we've uh, put all our upper, tackled all our upper angles on. We've released our straps. We've put diagonal straps on it to impose our will on the squareness of this entire structure. So now we have a nice square structure. That little tiny tie angle right there is keeping all those uppers spread apart, keeping everything plumb. And now we're ready to skin it. They are insulating panels. All the tongue side gets uh, one inch insulation. Easier to do it on the ground. After that, they go on two little mini dollies, knife edge. 
and they get rolled into place down here and we use the uh, they go in flat knife edge this way then we use the loader uh, we screw a eyelet on the one end of it hook a strap to it and just take it vertical and then lift it two inches and drop it in the channel so that's how the wall panels go in okay so midday Tuesday we've already got some wall panels standing on the on the big oven and again those openings are for for a heater there's one opening there there's another one a little farther down there's two uh, air handler units on this one <clears throat> these wall panels are already standing and you can see the little angle up top that we went through and welded in I didn't really show you that before on the first oven but there's a little angle we go through and we weld that in uh, to, to do our spacing on the on the black columns and that's what that turkey looks like that's a 20 foot long wall panel biggins so that little loader gets right down the aisle and hangs them just fine. They're down there insulating another batch of panels now. I just brought in uh, two more skids of pallets. So they're down there at the other end insulating some panels. The conveyor guys, they're putting this tan iron in over here. This is the area where the washer goes. That uh, Those horseshoes are going to straddle the washer and our washer is actually a split top washer so our washer gets supported off of their I-beams uh, these, uh, these are not split top ovens that's considered a closed top but a split top means it's got a longitudinal groove down the full length of the washer and the conveyor sits outside of the washer uh, they didn't want to pay for stainless steel um, conveyor track so we ended up uh, putting the conveyor outside the washer and just hang drop rods down through the conveyor slot well we got uh, conveyor supports going in over here this is where our washer goes which is good when we uh, get around to the washer that'll be ready and then after they got the conveyor supports in they're gonna put conveyor in poking out of the uh, dry-off oven. We have gone as far as we can go on the far wall here. We even put the little panels in above the air heaters. That's where, that box right there is where an air heater goes. And down there a little ways, another one goes in down there. And we still have a wall in our way. No one's come to our rescue. Nobody cares. That we're gonna we got one whole wall to do down here so we're gonna go ahead and run that that'll keep us out of trouble for a little while I don't know how long but it'll keep us out of trouble for a while somebody on the channel I think it was Chuck hey Chuck uh, asked me if I was on a strict time schedule with the general contractor I am not under contract with the general contractor I am under contract with uh, the customer the actual end user so I got nothing to do with the general on this job He doesn't have jurisdiction over me Which uh, I like it better that way Because when it comes to obstacles like that That'll really cut into your time frame especially when uh, uh, They don't uh, Care how long it takes them to do it but they still want to hold me to my bottom line and my uh, completion date. So, no, Chuck, I'm not under contract with the general. All right, so it's Wednesday. That's how far we got. Okay, guys, well, we've, uh, we've made it through the week. We made it over hump day, and it is uh, Thursday. And we got some decent work done on the oven. Uh, the building guys are here today, and they're going to be getting, I'm going to try to chip up, yeah, they're going to get that wall out of my way right there, so they're going to do my notch here, so I can continue running my black iron. I still got uh, three more horseshoes to put in, and then of course the skins that go over it and all that. So uh, it took, uh, by the time I told them about it, uh, to the time they're actually doing it, three days, not bad. 
for around here. Nothing happens fast around here. I've already learned that. So the building guys are here doing that. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna go look at some of the skins and stuff we've been putting on. And uh, we're making some good progress. So let's, uh, let's go take a look at that. Okay, well here's the south side of the oven. And yeah, we got this much wall put up. And yeah, we're still trucking along. You know, we've got uh, floor channel down all the way to there. We're prepping wall panels over there. We're insulating wall panels. And there's the guys doing the uh, prepping to do the uh, wall opening. Uh, this wall's done. We went ahead and hung the header. That's the header right there for the uh, air makeup. The air makeup goes in that hole right there. That's a six foot wide opening by, I don't know, I think it's 12 feet tall, something like that. But this wall's as far as we can go. So that's 108 feet of wall, wall right there. Insulated wall, 20 foot high. And I just heard, you know what I heard just go by me? It's called demonetizing. So, uh, I don't know how many times I've walked the full length of this oven, but I've done quite a bit of it. And then we're supposed to get trucks tomorrow. Uh, hopefully with the lid. I don't have a lid for this thing yet. But our storage area over there is getting, uh, starting to get empty. There's the looks of the oven from the inside. And still looking for a lid on this thing. But hopefully we get a truck tomorrow with lid and some more oven innards. Kentucky is over here putting in their structure still. That's going to connect to that conveyor rail and the dehydrant booth. Oven. Not a booth, an oven. And we still got innards to put in that one too. So uh, we're, we're rolling, not bad for our third week, getting all this put in. All right, let's go take a look at the stockpile, our dwindling stockpile. All right, so my dwindling stockpile, you guys remember what this looked like, right? That's the remainder of the black iron I got to put up, that's all of it. Those are the panels that fill it up. And then there's floor channel and some coping and trim and stuff after that wall gets cut out. Let's try to do a zoom here. Oh yeah, they're cutting out a wall. I can I can see them. I can see that saws all blade sticking through. Nice. Alright, so that's that's my uh, Thursday. Well, they're here building my notch. My notch is complete. I put a little baby notch over there for the conveyor. It hit over there too. It wasn't really in my way, but it was definitely in the conveyor guy's way. So we can stand up our last uh, three horseshoes. And we're just welding together right now. They just cleared out of here, so it was kind of nice to uh, get in here and get this done. Okay, well it's Friday the 13th and uh, it's the end of our week number three and uh, not everyone knows what Friday the 13th means. It's only going to mean something to a special few of you, Hiram, you know who I'm talking about. I got nothing to do with Halloween, but uh, Friday the 13th and we're finishing up for the week. I'm going to take you around and show you our progress. Had a few stumbling blocks this week. Uh, I still haven't got my Miller 211 back, um, my plasma cutter, a little blue plasma there, that thing is invaluable, that's great for notching floor, floor rails and stuff like that. Uh, the big uh, Miller white face is still chugging right along, uh, but we had to use it to do all our high reach um, uh, welding. 
So throw it on a pallet, send it up, and then the scissor lift next to that, and do all our high reach welding. But let me flip the camera around. I'll show you what we got accomplished this week and uh, where we're at with it. We're waiting on trucks. We're going to look at the material pile. It is virtually non-existent. Well, it is non-existent. But we'll, I'll show you an empty floor. How's that? All right. So uh, let's flip the camera around and take one last walk this week. Uh, see how the guys are doing. And uh, we're just finishing up for the week. We're actually going to go see... We're taking tomorrow off. We're not working Saturday. Uh, we're going to go see sprint cars. So uh, uh, they're wing cars, open wheels, and uh, a thousand some horsepower on a quarter mile asphalt oval, three degree banks. So uh, that's always exciting. So we're going to go see uh, roundy rounds. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get into last bit of uh, week three. Okay, well, the old Miller white face is still chugging right along. That's what I told you about. I've got my portable welding table that I brought out to the job site. It's handy for doing little bits of fab. I've got a vise that actually I lock up every night. That's a, huh, that's a really big Starrett. LS Starrett, 8th Old Vice Company. Uh, really nice vice and I don't let anyone grind on it. I don't do any torch work on it. I don't even let anyone do any serious hammering on it. It's it's old as dirt, and, but it's uh, kind of a kind of a good vice. Uh, my old piano cabinet knack box. That's my daily driver. It's it's a freaking mess right now. Everyone and his brother's been working out of it. Uh, this ready saw has become really handy. Uh, we keep that set up on the side of the toolbox all the time. Just you need a quick cut that that saw is just sitting right there and a flip of a lever right here and you're you're sawing so yeah that ready saw is really good and uh, stay tuned to the channel when those become available I'll let you know about it they're not available yet so my material cart just takes a bunch of bin boxes on shelving 10 gauge steel steel top so it's got a nice heavy top 8th inch gauge and uh, Wilton bullet vise I just acquired recently so that's a seven foot long workbench so that's a, that's a pretty good cart so that's my setup uh, my daily driver general purpose cart with a catch-all drawer with all kinds of junk in it There's an awful lot of crap in there but it's all good crap and then I had to go out and actually buy another knack box. Uh, we're using this for the welding kits. Uh, the Miller 211 and the plasma cutter both fit in there. Plus, plus our consumables. <coughs> and you know, and, and our bags and stuff too. All right, let's go take a look at the oven. All right, this oven, the walls are complete. They're just they're just screwing in the outer skin right now. Those two large openings you see here for air handlers. One goes there. And the other goes here. Uh, our building cutout was completed late yesterday. So we're actually able to do a little bit of work, stand up the rest of our steel, and actually get some wall panels in. I still don't have a lid. <coughs> I'm waiting on a truck right now. So hopefully we'll have that for Monday morning. But we do not have the material for the roof of this thing. This thing has no roof on it. Just in case anyone's wondering, that oven is 108 feet long and 20 foot tall. And our material pile. <laughs> There's nothing to show you. That big open space there. I think in week one or week two, I showed you the material pile and that we had that whole space taken up with everything we've already installed. 
I know it looks overwhelming, but after you get rolling on it, it just the stuff just disappears. And this other wall is getting screwed in right now too. And there's your fit around the uh, around the oven. You guys did a good job framing that all in around the oven. And the conveyor guys are hard at it. They, they stood that structure up this week. Uh, my washer goes in underneath that white structure there. So we're gonna be working there uh, after Thanksgiving. Um, if you've got any other comments or a question, uh, leave, it, leave it below and uh, I'll try to answer it in the next video. And next week we're on to week number four. But week three was uh, pretty much a success. <coughs> At this point we've got two ovens standing. Structure and skin. And we're out running the manufacturing guys. So we can put it up faster than they can build it. I thought it'd be a good time for a system overview. This is the small oven right here that we're working on. Conveyor line comes up, hooks a 180 powder coat, and then that big monster oven. This is it right here. And you see, there's the there's that fire break that, that we had to run it that we ran into uh, where they had to cut the notch, and I've actually got a vestibule that hangs out beyond that vestibule there. And that fire break is right across my oven right there. All right. So that's the way that works. Uh, and then our washer is going to go in under that white steel I showed you earlier. Um, dehydrant booth here. And before that's washer. So the washer, um, this, this unit here is not going to go in. This is a manual blowdown and cleaning area. They're not, they're not doing that yet. This is the, it's for future use. But the washer goes from right here to right here. There's a small air gap in between. There's another cleaning station there that they may want to put in for kind of a manual wipe down or manual blow off kind of thing. All right. Any water that gets trapped in the trailer in like the, uh, the C channels or the frames or anything like that, they're worried that there's going to be water trapped in the in the channels or uh, frame rails of the trailer that aren't going to be burned out. That won't uh, uh, dehydrate in there. So they think a manual blow off is necessary. Possibly, uh, time will tell. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this. Throw a comment below if you got a question, or just throw a comment below and say, Hey Stan, I enjoy this series, or Hey Stan, I don't, really don't like this kind of content. Uh, some people uh, have expressed that they do like it, but uh, we'll see uh, what, the, what the masses say. Alright, uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been a typical week with typical problems. You know, I, uh, my Miller 211 broke down, still haven't got it back. You know, building got in my way. You know, you know. Hey, do you see anything wrong with this picture? Yeah, there's a building in your way. You know, there's uh, there's things that happened on these kind of jobs where uh, the engineers can not catch something. You know, they don't do an overlay in AutoCAD, and uh, or on a, or on an elevation. You know, they do a they'll do a plan view overlay and make sure you're not going to hit any building columns and stuff like that. Anything major, but uh, they didn't. No one did any elevation, so we don't know that we we're going to hit that fire break. All right. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week for part number four.